Hello and thanks for joining. This is Rick and this is the second Excel 2013 tutorial and today's topic is going to be the setup and an overview of a basic spreadsheet in Excel 2013 in order to get you going. I wanted to point out the link to my website is www.10minutetrain.com and here's some other links that may be of interest to you. All of these tutorials will be posted on the website and then the final thing I wanted to mention about the tutorials is they should always be free so if someone's um, charging you for them let me know because they should not really be doing that. Taking a look at the spreadsheet here what I've done here is I've created a spreadsheet with several columns I've listed over here a product and in this case we're selling generic sports equipment like soccer balls, baseballs, bats, footballs, things like that. We've given a list price for each item and then in this case we're selling this we're making a, like a sales invoice um, to give to a customer and in this case we were selling fairly high quantities 10 soccer balls of each size um, you know 12 or 15 footballs and then since they buy they're a good customer and they buy in bulk we give them a 10 percent discount okay in this scenario here so that's the point one zero is 10 percent the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the net price of each item is after the discount. So all formulas with an Excel. So with the mouse clicked here in this cell right here, we're going to say equals, and all formulas start with the equal sign. We're going to do the list price, and then we're going to do the times, which is the asterisk symbol on top of the eight, the number eight key. And then what we're going to do, we're going to say one minus the discount and the reason why we're doing that and in this case one minus the discount percentage is going to give you ninety percent okay you could say list price b2 times point ninety or point nine to get the discount price here but the reason why we want to do this is to let the formulas do more work and give you more flexibility and I'll show you an example here so I'm going to go ahead and hit return and you see that soccer ball sells for 15 we're going to sell it for fifteen dollars and thirty cents a piece so if I came down here and I did this second one and I said equals list price which is B3 here times and I can see my discounts ten percent so now I want to see what's the price if I charge ninety percent instead of a hundred percent you can see it's sixteen sixty five but now if I come over here and I decide uh, you know, you know we're we're overstocked in size four um, soccer balls, so I'm going to give them a 25% discount to move the inventory out. You can see what happens; it doesn't change. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. But now, if I go over here and I say size three, I'm going to give them a 20% discount. You can see it dynamically updates. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and reverse that. So that's the whole reason for that is to give you a little bit more flexibility. But either way will work. Uh, but it does make sense to let the spreadsheet do the work and it also helps you avoid mistakes and missing things so what I want to do is copy this formula all the way down so what I do is single click the cell and now I go over here and I'm, I don't have my mouse button to press at all I wait for the cursor to get to the bottom right and I get the cross symbol I click and hold the mouse and I just drag it down to the very last row and there you see it copies it down so here size 4 soccer ball 1665 You'll notice as I go down the click on each cell, it changes rows dynamically. So now I'm on row four, row five, row six. And we're going to come up on a scenario where we don't want to do that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll show you how to do that in a second when we apply the tax rate. So now over here for the subtotal, what we want to do is we want to say always a formula equals, and we want to do quantity which is C2 in this case times the net price per unit and I hit return and there you see it's hundred and fifty three dollars and now the same thing I'm gonna click and use the mouse drag it down copy those formulas down now the tax so what I want to do here is apply tax to the subtotal so I'm gonna go over here and I am going to apply a tax rate so in this case I've made a little box up here and I said tax rate and in this cell here I put a tax rate of 6%. So what I want to do is take the subtotal 
and times it by 6%. So if I go over here and do equals and I do the subtotal and then I do the time symbol and then I get 6% I hit return and there you see it's nine dollars and eighteen cents of tax so now if I drag that down I have a problem and the reason why is this refers to L1 cell this one refers to L2 it dynamically updates so I want to I want to undo that and now what I want to do is I want to go in here and I want to freeze this so that it's a constant or hard reference to that cell and how I do that is I hit the F4 key and you see it puts dollar signs in front of them in front of the L in front of the one now if I copy it down you'll see what will happen it will automatically maintain the reference to L1 by the way so you can manually put in those dollar signs you don't need to hit F4 and the other thing you can do is you can freeze you know a column or freeze a row you do not have to freeze both of them so just keep that in mind for flexibility and now the total price is going to be equals subtotal plus the tax and I hit return and there I'm going to copy this down and then we probably want to put a, a grand total down here and how we do that we can go over to formulas and we can do auto sum and you see it automatically defaults to equal sum and then H2 to H10 I can hit return and there's my total $2,106 so one thing I wanted to point out here is you don't need to go into this formulas page you can do there'll be a couple common formulas so I'm going to get rid of that and I'll just do it manually so how I do that I say equals sum and as you fill these out you'll see you'll get a pop-up and it will give you the formulas that start with SUM and I oh, click open parentheses and then you see number one I click right here from my number one and then all I need to do is I can click this here and drag it down where you see the cursor gets the two arrows and drag it down to H10 and there's my total okay if for some reason I didn't want to include this one this um, H5 I could go down here and I could say I could do through H4 and then I could do comma and then I could do just click on H6 drag it down go to H10 and exclude that so it's very flexible but in this case I'm just going to go ahead and do a reverse and there's my twenty one hundred six dollars now a couple things I want to point out here first thing you're going to notice is we're dealing with money here so you probably want to clean it up some because you're not going to you're not going to charge someone twenty one hundred and six dollars point two four one two cents should always be rounded to two decimal places if you're dealing with US to US dollars in this case so I'm going to go over here to this column and I'm going to highlight all the cells and how I do that I just single click here and hold down the mouse key and select them all and now I'm going to go into format so what I want to do I'm going to go ahead there's numerous ways to do this but I'm going to go ahead and, and do a right click and I'm going to go down and choose format cells and what that'll bring up is this box here for format cells so now I'm going to go to number and what I want to do I'm going to do I'm going to change it to um, I'm going to change it to currency actually and I can have or, or I don't have to have I could get rid of this um, dollar symbol but I'm going to do that and I'm going to put two decimal places in so now you can see I've got two decimal places and now for the discount what I want to do is I want to make this a little cleaner so I want to make it look like you know something you could present to somebody so I'm going to highlight those cells I'm going to right click again and say format and now this time I'm going to go to num I'm going to go to percentage and then I'm going to say two decimal places and you can change it I'll, I'll do one decimal place All right so there's 10 percent now if I'm formatted in in percentages like that I could just instead of typing point one zero I could type 10 or let's say I want to give someone a 25 percent discount in this case I could say 25 percent it would make it 25 percent now of course if it's not formatted 
as a percentage, you're going to have to enter 0.25% uh, as 0.25. Okay, so I'm going to change that back to, point, to um, 10. And now the net price over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change this. I'm going to make it dollar symbols. And I'm going to make it currency. We're going to go two places. And I'm going to change all these to dollar symbols. And, or to currency with a dollar symbol. And then I'm going to go over here to... Um, this number here and I'm going to right click and say format and I'm going to go to currency and I'm going to put it, I'm going to choose currency with two decimal places and then I'm also going to go to font and I'm going to make it bold so I'm going to click bold here which by the way you could click bold up here if you want to and you notice I have a problem Right, I gave a, a thousand percent discount here, so I meant to do 10. So I'm gonna hit return, and there it cleans up the sheet. So it's always a good idea to do a quick sanity check view of the sheet. And now, by the way, let's assume that your customer was in a five percent tax area. All I'd have to do is go here to the tax rate and change it to five percent, and you'll see over here the tax rates will automatically update. And they're the total updated. All right. A um, few other things I wanted to share with you is uh, if you want to adjust the size of the cell, like for example, if this was getting cut off as an example right here, so you didn't see the full column here, you can do this multiple ways. One way you can do this is go onto the top of the row here, top of the column, I mean and wait for the cross. You can do the same thing if you're working with a row. Um, and just click and hold the mouse button once you get the cross and just dra drag and drop. Okay, make it as big as you want. The other thing you can do is you can right click or you can single click the cell and then right click it and say column width and you can change it to say 15 or whatever size you want to. And then finally another um, nice easy thing that you can do is you can highlight any column or all the columns and in this case I'm going to do all the columns and I'm going to go to format and this is on the home tab by the way I'm going to go to um, auto fit column width and it just adjusts it to the auto fit and then over here you know if you wanted to cent if you want to center these um, center these numbers in here you can do that just by clicking the um, center button here and that's what I want to share with you. So we're going to, as the tutorials move forward, they'll get a lot more um, advanced. And thanks for joining, and please subscribe. Take care.